I'm Christopher Ronneberg with the Norwegian newspaper Aften Posten. Uh, a question for, um, or two questions for Ms. Bartlett here. Um, as a journalist, I, I'm sure you can appreciate uh, getting other uh, impressions than empirical impressions from the ground. When you talk about the Syrian people and what the Syrian people want, how can you quantify that? Uh, do you have any independent uh, uh, surveys uh, where, where you can actually um, document that? How do I quantify the support of the Syrian people? The elections. In 2014, the Syrian people held elections. The voter turnout was 88%, including people in Lebanon where I was during the, the elections in Lebanon, which were actually ran for two days, extended hours, people walking for kilometers to reach the embassy, including people who flew from their own countries like mine, which has criminally shut the Syrian embassy so that Syrian people have no rights, and including people within Syria who braved a torrent of terrorist mortars and, and missiles on election day. That's based on elections, um, based on my own travels. Okay, so it, that's subjective, but as I said, I've traveled around Syria, talked with people of all faiths, all walks of life, but President Assad, they don't seize the problem. They actually overwhelmingly support him. So I'm basing it on their choice in their leader, and I'm basing it on my interactions with people in Syria and Lebanon. And, and secondly, um, you talk about the corporate media, the Western media, the lies uh, and all of this. Uh, could you explain what you think might be the agenda from us in the uh, Western media and why we should lie? Get ready for a surprise. Um, as for your agenda, not your, but the agenda of some corporate media, it is the agenda of regime change. How can the New York Times, I was reading it this morning, or how can Democracy Now!, which I was reading the other day, maintain until this day that this is a civil war in Syria? How can they maintain until this day that, there were that the protests were unarmed and nonviolent until, say, 2012? That is absolutely not true. How can they maintain that the Syrian government is attacking civilians in Aleppo when every person that's coming out of these areas occupied by terrorists is saying the opposite. Why the uh, international organizations on the ground should lie, why we shouldn't believe all these uh, ac absolutely documentable uh, facts that we see from the ground, these hospitals being bombed, these civilians who are talking about the atrocities that they have been experiencing. Um, how can you justify calling all of us liars? Sure. Finish him. International organizations on the ground. Tell me which ones are on the ground in eastern Aleppo. Yeah, okay, I'll tell you, there are none. There are none. These organizations are relying on the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, which is based in Coventry, UK, and which is one man. They're relying on compromised groups like um, the White Helmets, which let's, let's talk about the White Helmets. The White Helmets were, funded, were founded in 2013 by a British ex-military officer. They have been fu uh, funded to the tune of $100 million by the US, UK, and Europe, and other states. They purport to be rescuing civilians in eastern Aleppo and Idlib, yet no one in eastern Aleppo has heard of them. And I say no one, bearing in mind that now 95% of these areas of eastern Aleppo are liberated. The White Helmets purport to be neutral, yet they can be found um, carrying guns and standing in the dead bodies of Syrian soldiers. And uh, their video footage actually contains uh, children that have been recycled in different reports. So you can find a girl named Aya who turns up in a report in month, say, August, and she turns up in the next month in two different locations. So they are not credible. The SOHR is not credible. Unnamed activists are not credible. Once or twice, maybe, but every time, not credible. So your sources on the ground, you don't have them. 